Hello, ladies and gentle bats. I am Samuel Trotter, and I'm here to teach you all how to solo Chrome Racks for both fun and profit. So first things first, we're going to talk about how to get to the giant purple worm himself. Uh, first, you're going to take a quest over here with this nice young man. He'll, uh, he'll hand you the quest after you've completed the General Knox DLC on playthroughs 1 or 2. But you're going to want to wait until playthrough 2, because Cromorax is the real deal. So, having gotten your quest to slay the beast, you will then proceed to this here Scooter's establishment. As you do. And then you're going to go up. You're going to say hi to the man himself. Uh, sorry you die in a, you know, spin-off game. That's really tragic. And then you're going to get yourself a racer. I like the black one because I'm edgy. You know, I'm still, still in middle school in my heart. And then we're off to the races with our racer, you know? And then... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are in the lair itself, but you d you can't speak too loudly or Cromrax will hear you. He sees you when you sleep, you understand. He and Santa Claus, one in the same. Now, we are in Cromrax's lair, and so we need to start talking about how we're going to kill that monster up there. Now, Cromrax, there's a couple things you need to know. First things first, the man is tough. He takes zero damage from all weapons. However, he does have several weak points, and you must reduce each weak point to zero to destroy him. Now, most of the weak points are fairly easy. They're on his claws, and his eye is a weak point. You know, classic. But the one on his back is going to be the trickiest. So that's the one where you're going to see my technique for reliably shooting him in the back. Uh, you know, having friends is the uh, foremost strategy, because then, you know, someone can get behind him. But we don't have friends, you and I. I, I mean, I can't assume anyone in this world has friends. So friendless, we got to do it the hard way. Besides, soloing him, far more honorable. You know, he's not, well... Well, he is bringing his friends, but but they're dicks. And you're not bringing any dicks. I mean, probably the singular. You know what I mean. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the craw maggots and the craw worms. So you see, it's not just the craw marax. He's bringing his boys to the game. And so there's three varieties. There's the armored variety, big, heavy, dumb, and slow. We like those guys because they're big, heavy, dumb, and slow. Now, the ones that are not so big, heavy, dumb, and slow are the green Crawworms. They've got a charge attack. Now, the charge attack is dodgeable if you give it a sprint and a jump. Uh, however, you have to be aware that the charge attack is coming your way. Uh, thankfully, health gating exists in this game, so if it hits you and you're above a certain percentage of your health, which you should be, you know, you and I, we're healthy people. If it hits you above a certain percentage, it's not going to one-shot you. However, you got to be aware that charge attack, especially if you're at low health. Then you got to keep your eyes peeled and be ready to dodge. Uh, but the green crawl worms, not so bad. They're manageable. The crawl maggots, oh, fuck the crawl maggots. The crawl maggots are the bane of your existence. If I think the failure rate of a solo Cromorax attempt is directly related to the number of craw maggots that spawn. So these guys are fast, flighty buggers. They're going to jump at you from across the level. You're going to see them soar 60 meters through the air, just like majestic swans. And then they will devour your face. Uh, you can't run away from them. You can't really kite them. They will catch you. They will nom on you. So you got to kill them first. Uh, and that's why we pack... An electric weapon. I'm about to get to the weapons after we talk a little more strategy, but you're going to need a special weapon for them. Now, each of the craw, maggot, worm, green craw guy, they all have a special weakness. So the armored fellows, the ones we don't bother because they're big, fat, heavy, dumb, and slow, those guys are weak to corrosion. So that's why we're going to pack a corrosive weapon just in case. I don't want to hurt them. They're my friend. They just slowly you know, crawl after me as I kill their father. And I respect that in a craw maggot worm thing. So we don't really bother them unless we need the second wind. Uh, if you're really scared, um, you can kind of reduce them to low health with your corrosive weapon so that if you go down, you can kill them more easily uh, and get that second wind. Now, the green craw worms are weak to fire, and they are super weak in their critical spot. All the craw worm varieties are very weak in their crit spot. The crit multiplier is quite large. 
So that's why you see me holding my volcano right now. Uh, this beautiful sniper rifle. Absolute beaut. But any fire weapon will really do the trick for you. Any late game high end fire weapon. Uh, green crawl worms. You can't really reduce their health too much because you're basically going to one-shot them if you've got a sufficiently powerful weapon. But good to know, fire, you need it, kill them, get that second win. The little bastards, the flighty ones, the soaring swans of doom, those guys you need the electricity for. So we got an electric weapon packed in the back. I use the Orion. Well, let me see if I can find him. Ah, there it is. So I use the Orion because it is a beautiful weapon. But again, any high-end electric weapon will do. We'll talk equipment now. So... Uh, I'm going to show you guys what I'm packing. Oh, first of all, we, we pet the pearlescents. You know, we just admire them, shake their hands. And now we're going to look at the weapons. So what you, know, you can see here, I don't even have my corrosive weapon equipped. So this is the weapon I would use for the armored crawl worms. Pestilent Defiler is going to be your go-to for corrosive damage. It has a really high proc rate, beautiful weapon. Uh, if you don't have one, that's fine. Use a different corrosive weapon. Uh, but I don't even have mine equipped because I don't bother the armored craw worms. We have a truce, they and I. You know, after I kill their dad, we go out for beers. It's a little awkward, but we, we got over it. You know, it's been a long time. I've killed him many, many, many times. He comes back. Next, you're going to need a fire weapon. I highly recommend the Cobalt Volcano because Sniper Rifle, you know, it's got that crit percentage boost, even though it doesn't say it on the weapon because that, you know, that stat card is just too jam-packed. Pele demands a sacrifice. Um, I don't know why the soccer player wants you to kill someone, and yet it's there. However, the Volcano is great. Uh, the Hellfire is also fantastic. You know, I might do a video soon on the best weapons. Uh, Hellfire is also really, really good. Hellfire is a better general weapon than the Volcano, but they're both phenomenal. Uh, Firehawk could do in a pinch. Also okay. Yeah, could. Uh, now, the Orion. The Orion is a beautiful weapon. The Orion has the special power where when you shoot the ground, the bullet bounces and fractures into multiple smaller bullets that deal the same damage. So you'll see me shoot at the ground beneath the, the crawl maggots, like shoot right in front of them, because then all the bullets jump up off the ground and rip their evil little carcass to tatters. That's why I'm packing the Orion. But you don't need an Orion. You can use, again, any electric weapon will do the trick for them. Uh, they even get stunned by it because they're just so shocked. They're like, no, my plan was foolproof. Now here, first of all, first of all, viewer, I want you to take a look at this weapon because this is the most perfect sniper rifle you will ever see. I'm sorry that I have to show you this, because I know that now any weapon you ever pull, you will feel ashamed of compared to this liquid lance. This PPZ470 dot... Wow! Okay, so this is my liquid lance. You don't need one this good. This is basically a perfect sniper rifle. Um, a Borderlands 1. It's, it's not even perfect, because it's level 61. But... Uh, my admiration for my own luck aside, uh, you want a weapon like this. You want a Liquid Lance. The Liquid Lance is the ideal weapon for killing Chromax's backspot. The Sniper Rifle has the Critical Hit Damage Multiplier, which is going to get that backspot off just like that. If you're playing Mordecai, you get an even faster kill because he has so much crit damage multiplication. Uh, but really, any character, even even Brick, that you know dumb sack of bricks, he can kill that backspot with this Liquid Lance in a flash. So you want a weapon like this. Um... Also usable would be assault rifles with a scope, anything that can reliably hit that back spot for fast bursts of damage. You're not going to want a rocket launcher too unreliable. You're not going to want a shotgun unless it's a hunter shotgun that has, you know, very good aim. Uh, revolvers are fine. Uh, a masher might be good if it has high accuracy. You could also look at, you know, an SMG. I'm about to show you my SMG, but uh, the sniper rifle here is primarily for shooting off the back plating. Now, shooting the claw crit, crit spots, that we're going to do with this guy. But first, let me say, the reason we don't do it with this guy is because I don't have an ammo regen mod. Uh, on the PlayStation 3, my original account, the non-remastered, I farm Chromax with Mordecai because it's faster, albeit much less safe. Lilith, far safer. Uh, with Lilith, I almost never die. Mordecai, I die often, but I can kill Chromax super fast. Uh, but without ammo regen, I do not advise using sniper rifles as your primary Cromerax killing weapon, just because it's too hard to reliably shoot all the spots to death before you run out of ammo. It's just too difficult, um, while you're also being trailed by those maggots of doom. So our, my main Cromerax killing weapon is the Double Anarchy. This also is a gorgeous weapon, absolute destruction right here, world-ending weapon. 
214 times 4, or 215 times 4. You see? Maths. Easy. Now, you want the double anarchy because what you're going to see me do is once you get the back plate off, it's easy. From there, you're just kiting and spraying and praying while making sure with your movement, you have to move precisely to avoid the maggots and take them down should they threaten you. And Cromrax himself has a couple attacks in his repertoire, so I'm going to talk you through how to avoid and negate those various attacks. Uh, playing Lilith plays a big part in this. You should be playing Lilith. Again, it makes it much more reliable. Uh, Mordecai can do it too, because uh, he does it very fast. Roland and Brick are just strictly worse. Don't farm Cromrax with them, please. Um, you can, you know, I've killed Cromrax with every character. It's possible, certainly, but you're giving up a lot of uh, reliability. Lilith, again, can get a super high success percentage. And Mordecai is super fast, so Mordecai gets you that highest damage. Uh, Brick and Roland just really aren't kitted well for killing Cromorax, not as well as the other two characters are. Uh, but yes, Double Anarchy is my weapon for spraying down the other weak points. Again, you can use an assault rifle, is excellent. You can use a shotgun for them if you can aim for the correct crevices on Cromorax's body. Uh, double Anarchy is good. You can also use a, you know, the... Uh, the single anarchy, which shoots two bullets, so this would be like 215 times two, uh, or you can just use a normal SMG. Uh, ammo regen is phenomenal here. If you have an ammo regen mod, you might want to bring it with you just in case, you know, Cromax lives with a sliver of health, but you're out of ammo. So, shield doesn't really matter. I go for fast recharge because I, I think it's the most useful. You can also go for health regen, particularly if you're not playing Lilith. Uh, when, when I played Mordecai, I used health regen, quick health regen, uh, King Wee Wee's booster to get me back up to health gating thresholds. But uh, here I just use this guy. Uh, grenade doesn't matter. You're not going to use your grenade at all. And here you can see I'm using a mercenary mod so that I can get that SMG damage boost. Uh, you can also feel free. I also have down here. Uh, where do we get it? We got, uh, where's my sniper? This guy. So Spectre is the best one if you can get Ammo regen. Again, I haven't pulled a sniper ammo regen mod for Lilith. Uh, they're quite, quite rare to get. I mean, that's the thing I'd be more excited about than another pearlescent. So Spectre is the best if you have ammo regen. If you don't, I think submachine gun is the better way to go. More reliable, far easier, doesn't require as much aim, and your reliability is going to be higher. Uh, but Spectre is also quite solid. With Mordecai, you're going to be want yeah, you are going to want to go with either a pistol ammo regen mod, if you're going to use machine pistols as your spray down weapon, or you're going to want to go with a sniper rifle regen mod. Uh, if you lack either, which, you know, most people probably will, they're quite rare, quite valuable. If you don't have either, then you can just go with pure sniper rifle damage on Mordecai, uh, just like with Lilith, I've gone with some machine gun damage. And just, you know, be a little more accurate. Uh, firing Cromorax will be the hardest at the beginning because each time you kill him, you get a giant pool of really good loot. And from that loot, you're going to improve your Cromorax killing tools. So, you know, the first time I killed him on this character, on this remastered character, I, it was difficult. You know, I was using just scrounged up dirt level equipment. But, you know, soon enough, I find my baby. I find my crown jewel. I, you know, we're getting married next Sunday. It's... Trust me, you're going to find your bride I, by farming Cromorax. It's quite simple. Uh, you know, and then I found, uh, I think this I brought to the fight, so this was pretty easy, but I found both of these killing Cromorax. So you're going to have to work your way up, but it's going to feel good as get, killing Cromorax gets easier and easier. Yeah, and you can see here I've got, <laughs> there's my Wee Wee Super Booster from Playthrough 2. Uh, this is a great, absolutely phenomenal shield. Uh, you should make sure you keep it from the campaign quest or like side quest, whatever you get it at. Uh, and then I've just got some other shits here. But... Um, all of my, my sweet loots aside, oh, uh, and, you sh and you should see my bank, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's time to actually get to killing Cromrack. So I'm going to show you guys the, uh, going to show you guys how it's done, how to make it easy. So we're going to ride this elevator up. When we get up, Cromrack is going to be looking us in the face. He's going to look me in the eye and say, fuck, not again, this guy. Have you not taken enough of my hundreds? And I'm going to say, Cromrack. Sit down. You're about to get schooled. And so as Cromorax pulls out his pen, pencil, paper, you know, puts his backpack down, getting ready for school, we're going to sprint to the right. And we're going to pray that a craw maggot does not spawn. We want armored craw worm. We want green craw worm. We don't want the maggot. If a maggot spawns, we have to kill it before we can deal with Cromorax himself. So you're going to see me sprint to the right, look around to see what craw creatures spawn. 
And if there's no Crom Maggots, then we're going to sprint to the right, turn around, and shoot Crom Rex in the back when he turns his back to us. So I'm going to equip this guy, uh, my fourth sniper rifle, just to get ready. All right, there he is. Oh, two Maggots. So that's pretty unlucky. So we have to kill them. So I'm going to shoot at the ground, kill that one. And then where's the other one? Where'd it go? All right. There it is. All right. Easy enough. Okay. Uh-oh, Chromax is doing this attack, so we're gonna whoop, do a little side to side, and I need to heal. So I'm gonna phase walk to get my health regen off. Chromax is going there. We're gonna go here. So we wanna use this obstacle here to get him to turn around and face his back towards us. So as you can see, he's starting to expose that back plate. Oh, there's uh, the big fat slow guy. We like him. Uh-oh, another Chrom Maggot. Okay, so now we're down. It's key not to panic, and we're just going to kill this Craw Maggot to get our second wind. And then, whoop, phase walk out of there. So this is why Lilith is so good. With Mordecai there, I might have gone down again, and if I go down again, I probably die. Uh, because, you know, it's been quite unlucky so far with the, uh, the spawns. Oh, let's get this guy out. All right. All right, so we've almost got the back plating. I think it takes five shots from this particular sniper rifle to knock off his back. Uh, what else we got? Green Crawworm. Okay, green is fine. Uh-oh. So here's the spit attack. You're going to want to juke side to side to dodge that one. Oh, he's going for the jump. So we phase walk to avoid the jump. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Uh, often if you phase walk to reset the aggro, he won't use his special attack. So let's see if we can get this back spot. Yeah, two more shots. Excellent. So now that we've got those spots, now we're spraying and praying with our submachine gun. As you can see, we're going to hit his weak spots just due to the sheer volume of bullets we're throwing into the air. As we knock off the weak spots, he's going to start roaring, like so. When he roars, he respawns his creatures. There's the charge attack. You're not, you're not going to want to get hit by that. I got hit by another one. But all right. We're going to want to phase walk in a second to reset the aggro of the green crawworms. But I just jump back and forth to dodge any charge attacks that might be coming my way. All right, we're jumping, we're jumping, we're jumping. We're gunning him down. See, see, we're dodging these charge attacks. Oh, we take that one to the face. But as I told you, because we kept our health high and we're managing our health and shield well, we health gated it so it did not knock us down. We had sufficient health to not go down there. So we're going to go back over here and we're going to start laying down more fire onto Chrome Racks. Very simple. And see, see big, fat, dumb, and slow over there? See that purple guy? He's just, he's trying to get to me, but he can't get to me. I'll see him for beers after the fight, don't you worry. See, he's got the baby spit attack. Oh, oh, he hears me making fun of him and he doesn't like it. All right, so we phase walk, regain our health, regain our shield here. I'll show you what skills I'm using afterwards to show you the correct build for fighting Cromrax, but I also detailed that build in my Lilith guide. So if you want to see that build, you can also go to the guide uh, from a more detailed analysis. All right, oh. So now we just got the one more spot to go. The last one is often the hardest, but we're going to get him right here. Just, oh, there's the charge, and, and, <laughs> come on, Gromrax, come on. I'm making a video. I'm making a video. What are you doing? Oh, my gosh. All right, there he goes. There he is. He cooperated. And just like that. You have your Cromrax kill. Now, ideally, I probably should have killed him farther away from this in case some loot lands up on top. Uh, usually it bounces down, but you want to be safe. So, here are my prizes. Uh, among these, there's probably some pretty good upgrades for someone who had just started killing Cromrax. Uh, but for me, there's probably not too much here I'm interested in. Uh, nonetheless, I'll take a look in a second. For now, I'm going to show you my build. So here's what you're looking at to start killing Cromrax. Uh, I think this build is pretty optimized. Um, it's lacking two skill points you can get through completing the quests at Mad Moxie's Arena, but I can't really be bothered, and it doesn't matter too much. The extra two skill points, one would max girl power, the other skill point would probably go into Enforcer, perhaps, um, maybe Resilience if I'm doing the Arena a lot, but it doesn't matter particularly much. Uh, phase Walk is essential, uh, D.Va... Obvious, Inner Glow, obvious you want that heal. Uh, I'll just highlight the ones that are most important. Diva is super important because it's going to get you that health regen, which allows you to get above the health gate. Hard to get, again, essential because you need that extra cooldown reduction so you can be hard to get. You know, Cromorax, Craw Daddy, he's always asking me out. He's always trying to nom on me, but I got to tell him, no, 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 no. I'm a married man. Well, engaged, uh, you know, tangential. Uh, girl power. Good. Kill the maggots, get some shield back. Quicksilver, very nice. 25% DPS, thank you very much. 
a spark. Uh, kind of irrelevant. I mostly have these three for the arena and for campaign purposes. Uh, there's really just not a good Chromrax killing alternative. There's nothing that increases the efficiency that much. Slayer, super good for Chromrax. All damage against him is crit hit damage. So what do you reckon? Uh, Silent Resolve, we are silently resolved. You know, I love Neo. Neo is a great video game. Uh, so is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. So I'm just, you know, playing it with Silent Resolve over here. Hit and run, extra phase walk duration means extra inner glow healing. Sign me up. Sign me up, brother. Uh, blackout. Blackout. Quite solid. If you really need that reset, you know, just pop a volcano shot into a green crawl worm's face and you're good to go. Uh, and high velocity. High velocity is so broken. This skill is just absolutely dumb. I don't know. I don't know why it exists. But yeah, it's really good. Uh, the only upgrades I might make if I was, you know, throwing the campaign completely to the wind just to fight Cromorax is I would take the points out of Phoenix because it doesn't matter. Uh, and not the points out of Intuition because it doesn't matter, and I would put them into Girl Power, I would take Enforcer because, you know, maybe you kill a Crom Maggot and then you get a little extra damage when you're shooting Cromorax, that's probably fine. Uh, but maybe then, you know, you take... I really... I don't think much else can be bothered with. Mind games, maybe, so you can daze the Crom Maggots, but it's pretty irrelevant. This build is basically what you want to be going for, and you don't need to switch it up that much. Uh, the game gives you too many skill points, so you don't have to make any sacrifices. All right. Whew. Oh, man, we've been barreling along. Uh, if you have any questions about killing Cromrax or need any additional assistance, uh, any tips, advice, just shoot me a comment. I will respond at post haste or, you know, a member of my brilliant community will answer your question for you. You know, the community here, they're pretty awesome. They're very supportive. They're very small, but that's good. That means, you know, I get to know them, know their, know their face. You know, if they make a bad comment, they know that I know they made a bad comment. And they will feel ashamed. Thus, uh, so yeah, leave that comment if you got any questions. If this helped you, if you killed Cromorax, please post in the comments if you killed Cromorax. Tell me what the best drop you got was. I would, I would really genuinely love to know uh, you got some sweet loot uh, with the help of this video. Uh, it would be really cool. Uh, leave a like. Subscribe if you would like more Borderlands-based content. Uh, check out some of my other videos. I made some comments. Uh, and I guess I'll conclude this video now that I've gone through the uh, call-to-action spiel that, you know, if I didn't do it, big YouTube would eat me for failing to, uh, to vouch for liking as a valid system of worth. I'll conclude this video by just talking about, again, uh, who I think the best characters to farm Cromrax with are. You want Lilith. Again, uh, I think Lilith by far the best because the safety, the security is superior to Mordecai's speed. Uh, if you have to choose between Brick and Roland, who I think are inferior to both Lilith and Mordecai, but if you must choose one of them, I think Roland is superior because he, his ability to boost the output of shotguns and machine guns, as well as his ability to have infinite ammo purely through his skill tree. He doesn't need an ammo regen mod, although he can also use an ammo regen mod. Uh, I think that makes him pretty good, pretty reliable. Uh, and Astoria's a good distraction for the Crom Maggots. Uh, Brick just doesn't really bring anything to the table. Brick's best attributes are his kill skills and his durability, neither of which help you kill Cromorax. Uh, the durability doesn't really matter because Cromorax just one-shots you anyway, like health gates you with every hit. So you know, no matter how tanky you are as Brick, it doesn't matter. And your kill skills, although there are the Maggots to kill, which certainly is good and boosts your damage, they're just so brief. Uh, and as you saw, you really don't want to be triggering kill skills. You want to be focusing on Cromrax because the longer the fight goes, the longer you risk getting cheesed by some Crom maggots or getting pinned in a corner with your action skill down. You, you really just want to be safe. Um, and Brick, also, Berserk isn't going to do anything for you against Cromrax. Although, although, if any of you can get the final blow on Cromrax with Berserk with a jumping uppercut to one of the weak places, you would need, uh, you need to be playing with a friend because you can't do it solo. Cromrax will just eat you as you run at him. But if someone can get a Cromrax kill with Brick's punch as the final blow, oh my goodness. I, wow, I would owe you a handshake. I would owe you a, lo a lot more than that, trust me. But, you know, the missus would, uh, she would disapprove. Now that I've explained all of these things, now, as I leave you, I'm just going to play myself killing Cromrax. Uh, another time, just to give you one more example of the fight. You know, if you felt that this one was too smooth, if you can accuse me, make accusations that, you know, this is scripted, you know, you didn't one-shot him on your first try, Cromorax is impassable. No one in the history of YouTube has killed this man. Well, I'm going to show you a couple more kills. So I'm going to, no, I'm going to roll the music. 
going to show you some more kills. You can kick back, relax, and watch me get funky with the Crom Man himself. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it, guys. You know, life is hard, unlike, again, killing Cromorax. So take care of yourselves, you know, take care of yourself and others. Peace, everybody. Oh, and because I forgot, because clearly, you know, I use a script, guys. I totally use a script. That is why I forgot to tell you. Uh, two important pieces of information. So also, the fastest way down is not to take the stupid slow elevator, but you want to jump off the cliff and die. You know, that's how a gentleman uh, resets Gromrex. You leap off that cliff, firing your machine gun into the air victoriously. Uh, and, you know, we don't care about losing the money. I mean, look at us. Look at this money. Like, are we poor? No, we jump off the cliff, guys. That's what we do. Um, the other really important thing is that to reset Cromorax, you don't have to exit the game and then drive back here. You just have to go back out the front, and then you go back in. It's that simple. I don't know how much time I wasted driving back and forth, uh, resetting the game. You can just go outside and then come back in. Uh, he's still dead. And the guns are still there, uh, which I still need to look at. You know, I'll let you guys know if there's anything interesting in there. Maybe one of you guys saw Pearl and was going to be, like, shouting at me in the comments. Regardless, guys... I wish I was a little bit. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked good. I would call her. Wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six form father. I wish I was like six foot nine so I could get with Leo. She cause she don't know me, but yo, she's really fine. You know I see her all the time, everywhere I go, and even in my dreams, I can scheme a way to make her mine. Cause I know she's living fat. Her boyfriend's tall and he plays ball. So how am I gonna compete with that? Cause when it comes to playing basketball, I'm always last to be with and in some cases never put it off. So I can lean up on the wall. Or sit up in the bleachers with the rest of the girls who came to watch they may ball. Dad, y'all, I never understood black brother got to the fly girls and me, I get the hood rats. I tell them scat, skittles, kebab, got hit with a body, but in a hospital for dark in that mess. I confess it's a shame when you living in a city that's the size of a box and nobody knows your name. I'm glad I came to my senses, like quick, quick, got six sticks in my stomach, overcome it by thoughts so of me and us together, right? So when I asked her out, she said I wasn't a type. I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl with a good, I would call her. I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat. Thing I want to say to you guys is to remember that Cromorax is hard. You know, if Cromorax is kicking your ass, it's it's not easy. Cromorax is a beast. You know, for all my joking a second ago, you know, on my sign off, this is a really hard fight. I've done it hundreds of times, so to me, it's not that difficult. But my loot is phenomenal, and again, I've got the movements down to muscle memory. But if you're just starting, it's terrifying, you know, and I understand that. So don't beat yourself up about it, guys. Anyone who claims that this fight is easy, anyone who claims that they can do it without dying, you know, like never dying, that person's both an asshat and a liar. So don't listen to that guy. Listen, listen to me, you know, listen to this voice telling you that it's fine to get your ass kicked by Cromorax. I've done it. You know, you've done it. My best friend's done it. I'm pretty sure my dog's done it, so don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry. I don't even have a dog.